It's no longer controversial to say humans are causing climate change, but what we should do about it is less settled. Boris Johnson's hosting the COP26 climate summit in Glasgow, and this is his mantra. We can get real on coal, cars, cash and trees. Now, coal, cars and cash remain difficult, pressing issues, but trees, you'd think they are more straightforward. Trees absorb carbon dioxide, one of the causes of climate change, and there are plans to plant billions of them. But is tree planting that rare thing, a good idea without a catch? To many, it's not that straightforward. We cannot plant our way out of the carbon crisis with business as usual emission scenarios. Or there's Dr. Kate Hardwick. She notes tree planting now dominates political and popular agendas and is often presented as an easy answer to the climate crisis, as well as a way for corporate companies to mitigate their carbon emissions. But sadly, it isn't as simple as that. Well, let's look at why there are questions about mass tree planting. Well, first of all, planting lots of trees doesn't necessarily mean you end up with more trees. Forrest Fleischmann's a leading expert on mass tree planting. In September, he tweeted, India's attempted large-scale forest restoration for decades. We've just published one of the first systematic evaluations of these efforts. We find that decades of tree planting have had almost no impact on forest canopy cover or rural livelihoods. That's right, almost no impact. Just planting trees isn't enough, and that's for a number of reasons. First of all, saplings are vulnerable. Around a quarter will die young. Second, it takes 20 to 30 years before a tree will draw significant amounts of carbon dioxide. Third, the trees need thinning. Without space, a new forest won't thrive. And fourth, if trees die and rot, all the carbon they're storing will be released. Forests are complex ecosystems, and mass tree planting won't easily recreate this. As three forestry experts put it, the current situation is that non-native tree species end up being planted. These can, in popular terms, cause ecological havoc. So there are questions about where the trees are planted, which trees are planted and how they're managed. And there's an even more fundamental issue. Is there enough space? We'll need something like 1.6 billion hectares of extra land. That's five times the size of India that will need to be planted with new forests. But even if we came close to doing something like that, we fear that's going to have a disastrous impact on farming and food prices and eventually levels of hunger around the world. As you can hear, these are grave doubts. But even if we put them to one side, there's another issue too. Here's Dr Bonnie Waring again. Even if we were to cram trees into every corner of the globe where they could possibly grow, we estimate that they would absorb only about 10 years worth of uh, carbon emissions at current rates. And it would take them about a century to grow large enough to do so. Neither the volume or the speed is enough. But those who advocate for tree planting don't necessarily say that it is. They argue that trees are one of many ways to help the climate. We need thousands of these solutions. We need to prevent our annual emissions. We need to draw down carbon that currently exists. And trees are just one of the most powerful of the carbon drawdown solutions. It's true, trees are crucial to capturing carbon that exists. What's more controversial though, is that tree planting is also used for something called carbon offsetting. The idea is that if you cause emissions, you balance this with an action to reduce carbon elsewhere. One example's the band Coldplay. It wants its next tour to be as green as possible. Here's Chris Martin on one of their ideas. In terms of offsetting people being there, we're able to plant a tree for every ticket sold. Coldplay are doing other things too. More broadly though, offsetting is now widely used by companies and countries as part of their efforts to become carbon neutral. And many, though not all, offsetting schemes involve trees. But some scientists just don't buy the whole idea. The whole concept of offsetting just doesn't stack up. The trouble is that all the nature-based offsetting solutions you can have in the world are fundamentally finite. There's no way you can say, it's okay to have had my emissions because I've gone and planted some trees. Even if you plant really high quality trees in a really environmentally responsible way. And this cuts to why tree planting is so controversial. It's not about if tree planting can make some difference, it's about if it takes a focus away from emissions. And as we consider that, this clip is perhaps useful. Of the author, Fred Pierce. If we're 
intent as we should be on keeping warming below uh, 1.5 degrees. We cannot do that with trees. That will just buy us a bit more time, but we certainly can't do it without trees. And as I've made this report, I've been thinking of this graphic. These are global emissions over the past 100 years. The year with the most emissions on record is 2019. And while our emissions remain this high, the difference that mass tree planting can make is limited. It also risks creating a reassuring sense of action being taken when the reality is that carbon levels in our atmosphere need to come down and quickly. For that to happen, we'll take emissions cuts, no matter how many trees we plant.